Hello, I'm Paulina Chin of MapleSoft. In this webinar, we're going to look at how to color plot surfaces, lines, and points based on values using a discrete set of colors. I'll show an example here to, so you can see what I mean. Think of this feature as similar to a paint by number kit. Essentially, we'll be partitioning or splitting the plot data points by value and assigning a color to each group of points. The way we'll do this is to use the color scheme option. When you use the uh, color scheme option with a list of colors, green and violet in this case, the default scheme is what we call the Z gradient scheme, which applies a color gradient over the entire surface. The colors change gradually from one to the next color as given in the list. So here it goes from green to violet in a gradual manner. In contrast, the value split scheme, which is the one we'll be examining in this webinar, um, here it colors the surface using only those colors requested. So instead of a gradient that goes from green to violet, we have some of the colors in green and some in violet. Now, um, all of these different schemes are described on the plot color scheme help page. And um, you could get more details about all the specific schemes that are available, uh, the gradient color schemes, coloring by coordinates, um, custom schemes, and coloring by values, which is what we're talking about in this webinar. And there's a full help page for this particular feature as well. Let's now look at a detailed example using Fisher's Iris data set. So this here is a data frame containing data for 50 samples, each of um, three species of irises. Uh, there are values here in the columns for the sepal and petal lengths and widths. And let's look at this data set a little bit more closely. If I expand it, you'll see there are 150 samples in all, uh, 50 of the Virginica type, uh, 50 Versicolor, and 50 Setosa. And um, here uh, I have a picture just to show you the petals are the uh, upright ones here, while the sepals are the um, longer pieces that uh, fall downward. And first, I'll start off by creating some vectors from this data that I'm going to use in um, our plotting examples later. OK. In this first example using the iris data, we want to plot the petal length of each iris against the petal width. Then we want to color each of the points according to the species. We start first by defining a mapping, uh, and this is a list of equations matching a species name to a particular color. Now we create our plot. Uh, we, we plot the petal length and petal width uh, using the data plot command. And then we use the color scheme option to do the coloring. So notice that uh, the first argument here is value split, which is the kind of color scheme we're, we're using. Uh, the second is the vector we want to color by, the species vector in this case. And the third is the mapping that we just defined. And one thing that's important is the length of the uh, vector that we are coloring by must be the same uh, length as the data set here. So if we look at our plot, it's easy to see that the uh, uh, Setosa samples, which are in magenta, uh, have short petals and sepals, while the uh, Virginica 
irises, which are uh, denoted by the purple, have the uh, longest lengths. This next example shows how to color by ranges of numerical values. Here we want to plot the petal lengths for a single species, so I'm using only um, 50 sample points here. Uh, these are the ones um, uh, for the uh, Virginica species. And uh, I'll just plot them against the sample number. We also want to color according to the sample length. So this is first done using the mapping shown here. So notice that the left-hand side of each equation is now uh, a range of values. This can also be a single value. Now you might be wondering about the duplicates like 5.9 here, and um, these are resolved in a simple way. All the comparisons are done in order, so the color is determined by the first match that occurs. So if, he, if uh, Maple encounters a data point um, of 5.9, then it would automatically match to orange and then skip the rest. So let's create our plot. And so you can see here the uh, Samples with sepal length between 4.9 and 5.9 are colored in orange and so on. Now, you don't have to fully specify your mapping and data values to color by, as Maple can make certain choices for you. So in this first example, um, you see that we have only two arguments here in this list. The uh, mapping is provided, but the vector that we normally color by is, is missing. So in this case, Maple just uses the, um, the plotted data itself to, and, um, uh, for that purpose, and it just colors by the petal length in this case. In this second example, we have uh, our mapping here where we say that all values between 5 and 6 get the color blue, but everything else gets the default color of, of gray. So um, this is the way the color scheme uh, feature works. Matches are attempted, and if no match occurs with the left-hand side of the equations, then a default color is used. And if no default color is specified by the user, then um, a color of black is assumed to be the default. And in the last example of this section, the uh, color mapping is not actually given. So again, here we're coloring by species. Uh, and that's indicated with the species vector, but, but no color mapping tells Maple what colors to choose, so Maple just chooses some default colors. We'll end by looking at two final examples. This first example here simply shows how easy and useful the value split color scheme can be for showing the separation of data values such as uh, pass-fail grades, uh, profits and losses, and so on. So it's a very simple example, not too different from the ones I'd already shown you. The second one uses matrix plot, and it shows you that the value split color scheme can work with uh, various visualization commands throughout the Maple library. It can work with any command that produces a vector or matrix of points or polygons. And note that um, this also includes surfaces and curves because uh, these are essentially made up from collections of points. But one thing to note, as seen in this next example where we're coloring according to a different matrix from the one that uh, we're plotting, that uh, you must make sure that your two matrices here have the same dimensions. 
Well, that concludes our webinar on coloring plots by value. Thank you very much for watching.